This video is about a controller for the Goen user flash that I wrote in Verilog and integrated into my Pico RV32 Mini SoC on the Tang Nano 9K FPGA development board. I'll briefly present its design and compare its performance to Goen's soft IP controller that was the subject of my last video. See that video for details, but user flash is flash integrated on the FPGA for application use. Here's the Goen IDE running on Windows. I'll quickly show you the version I'm using. It's that. And the new flash controller that I wrote is in file uflashcontroller.v, but it has the same interface as the previous flash controller, the, the one that uses the go and sop IP block. So you just enable the one you want to use, and then you can build and run. You enable like that. So let's build this, but let's also enable the go and analysis oscilloscope. So now I'll do, do a build, which will take a little while. Now let's load and run. So we load like so. And make that go away. Run the going analysis oscilloscope. Stick it over here and start it running. And then I need my terminal window. I'm using TerraTerm. And so let's just do a reset so you can see how it starts. So it says enter HE for a list of commands. So if I type HE, you see a list of commands. To exercise the flash, well, first we can just do a simple read. So read word 20000, that reads the first word of flash. And that should trigger the Goen analysis oscilloscope. So you can see here that memvalid is, is active for one, two, three, four clocks. So read is just taking four clocks. That's quite a bit fewer clocks than the Goen soft IP used. I've also added some commands to do uh, to test the entire flash. So if you say AF, that erases the entire flash. And by the way, we're running at 5.4 megahertz here. And then check flash um, checks the flash and prints X, X's for every every location in the in the flash that doesn't match a pseudo random value. And now it's been erased, so they all fail. So to write the flash, you do WF. And that writes all locations of flash with a pseudo random value. And so that's done. So now we can do another check flash. And we should see all dots and zero errors. So it looks like the flash is working. And you can see that the go and analysis oscilloscope was, was activating every time. So it looks good. Next, I'll summarize performance differences between um, my controller and the go and controller. But let me just open the Verilog file for a minute and show you the key difference. And the, the key difference is that my module is parameterized according to the clock frequency. So it, um, let's see right here, calculates the number of clocks that it needs to wait to meet some timing requirement. And so that means that when you're using a lower clock frequency, like 5.4 megahertz, uh, my controller will wait for fewer clocks because each clock takes longer. The Goen soft IP does not do that. So it only achieves reasonable performance you know, at or near the 50 megahertz target that it's designed for. And mine does better with lower clocks and, and also does a little bit better with higher clocks. And so next we'll look at some summarized performance results. I measured by reflecting the select and ready signals on external pins. This is the Goen controller at 40.5 megahertz doing a read. You can see the time delta X is 342 nanoseconds. This is the same at 5.4 megahertz. You can see the read time increased a lot to 2.59 microseconds. This is due to the lack of clock speed parameterization in the Gowan module. Here are the operation times in seconds for reads, writes, and page erases at both 5.4 MHz and 40.5 MHz for the Gowan Soft IP module and my faster module. But these numbers are hard to read, so I created a normalized plot. We'll look at that next. Here are the speeds in graphical form, normalized to the faster controller at 40.5 MHz. Blue and yellow are the Goen controller at 5.4 and 40.5 MHz. Red and green are the faster controller at those same clock speeds. Green is 1.0 due to the normalization. You can see that a Goen write at 5.4 MHz takes 9.21 times the time compared to the faster controller at 40.5 MHz. The faster controller takes about the same time for writes and page erases regardless of clock speed, and the Goen controller is about the same at 40.5 MHz, but is much slower at 5.4 MHz. 
For reads, the faster controller performance varies with clock speed because reads take few clocks and a time delay in my implementation of less than one clock cycle is not possible. The Goan controller uses more clock cycles for reads than I think is necessary. I don't know why. To understand the user flash controller implementation, we should take a look at the user flashes documentation and the correct document is this one. The uh, Goan user flash user guide document UG295. And if we scroll down in here, we'll find the description of lots of different user flashes. The Tang Nano 9K uses the Flash 608K, this one. And by the way, the Tang Nano 20K does not have a user flash. So this video applies only to the 9K. So this section of the documentation gives the, flash, the flashes basic characteristics. It's width, right cycles, you know, rows and columns and stuff like that. And if you scroll down, it talks about the, the signals of the flash and what they mean and various operation modes. And then also how to instantiate the flash in Verilog and VHDL. And then finally, we come to this statement here. The timing of flash 608K is the same as flash 64KZ. So we click here. And this is the same section, but for the 64KZ. And so if we scroll down, we see the same sort of stuff. But then finally, we get to what we really need, which is the timing diagrams for the various operations. So this is the timing diagram for a read operation. And if we keep going, we'll see timing diagrams for write and erase. And it's these timing diagrams that are the key to designing a controller. So let's take a deeper dive look at one of them, in particular the one for reads. The diagram shows how signals must change state for an operation. Time flows from left to right. Required time intervals, like TAS, are shown on the diagram. The actual values are in the document, and I annotated the diagram with them. So, the 0.1n means that at least 0.1 nanoseconds must pass between asserting XE and YE and then asserting SE. The controller design idea is to use a state machine that changes state as signals change going from left to right. This results in four states for reads. Idle is the first state. All control signals are zero. Logic in the idle state waits for the Pico RV32 integration signal SEL to become true and then checks to see if the transaction is a read, write, or a page erase. We will see this in the Verilog in a minute. Suppose the transaction is a read. That means the controller must set XE and YE and transition to state read 1. XE and YE assume their new values when the state transitions. The controller must stay in state read 1 for at least 0.1 nanoseconds, but with a 40 MHz clock, it takes 25 nanoseconds to change state. Note that the largest time on the page is 25 nanoseconds. So, if we limit the clock to 40 MHz, it means that a simple design need only remain in a state for one clock cycle. That's what the design does for reads. State read 1 sets SE, so it will be asserted on transition to read 2. In state read 2, the controller assigns SE to be deasserted and changes to state done, which sets XE and YE and in fact all control signals to be deasserted and transitions back to idle. The Pico RV32 integration signal ready is asserted whenever the controller is in state done. The ready signal tells the Pico RV32 core that it can sample the data. Let's take a look at the Verilog. Here's the file. And if we scroll down, we see all of the states in the state machine. So we've got idle, read 1, and read 2, like we discussed, and then states needed for erases and writes. And then sometimes we have to stay in a state for more than one clock cycle. And if that's true, we calculate the number of needed clock cycles for the various states here. And then as we scroll down, we come to the actual state machine. Here's state idle. So if the user flash is selected, we execute this to determine whether it's a read or a write or a page erase. It's a read if all of the write strobes are zeros. So in that case, we say the next state is going to be read 1, and we have to assert XE and YE like we just discussed. For writes, all of the write strobes are 1s. And there, what we have to do is choose the next state to be write 1 and just, and just assert XE. For page erases, it's a little bit different. We determine that if, if only the first bit in the write strobes is a 1. So that's a write of, a, of byte sized to a word aligned location. That's what signifies a page, a page erase in my design. That's the same as in the previous video. And so here, 
we have to set this stuff and, and go to state erase one. Now, if we scroll down, we'll find one of these states where we have to stay in the state for more than one clock cycle. And that's done with a cycle counter loop. You can see it here. So it just waits until it, until it gets to a predefined count, and then it can make the transition to a new state. So that's pretty much how the Verilog works. Down at the bottom is where we actually instantiate the user flash. And if you don't recall, that's done using the IP core generator tool. So if you open that and go to, let's see, user flash, then by clicking OK here, it will give you the thing you need to paste into your design that we just saw. As usual, we should have a quick look at the process outputs. So the place and route report shows the resource utilization of the project. The mini SOC is up to 29% of the, of the logic. And I'll pause and you can have a quick look at the other numbers if you want to. The timing analysis report is all blue, so we're passing timing. And I'll scroll down here and pause. And you can pause the video if you want to take a better look at these numbers. Implementing my own controller for the Goen user flash was interesting, and it was fun comparing it to the Goen soft IP block described in my previous video. I've put the updated Tang Nano 9K project into yet another branch on GitHub. See the link below. I'll also include a link to the previous video and see the Pico RV32 playlist for other related videos. I'll end this video here. Thanks for watching.